Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on the behavioral pain scale. Introduction Pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage, according to IASP in the year 2020. Pain is prevalent amongst ICU patients. 40 to 70% experience moderate to severe pain, 30% experience pain at rest, 50% experience pain during various nursing interventions, and up to 71% experience untreated pain. Types of pain in critically ill patients includes persistent pain associated with invasive procedures or discomfort, acute pain related to an ongoing disease, intermittent pain associated with ICU procedures, and chronic pain occurring before ICU admission. Consequences of pain Physiological consequences Severe pain produces a neurohumoral response with activation of the sympathetic nervous system and release of catecholamines. For CVS effects, these include tachycardia, hypertension, increased myocardial oxygen demand, myocardial ischemia, vasoconstriction with increased peripheral vascular resistance and impaired peripheral perfusion, reduced mobility, venous stasis and increased clotting results in venous thrombosis. Respiratory effects include diaphragmatic splinting from pain, decreased lung volume, atelectasis, decreased cough, sputum retention, infection, and hypoxia. Gastrointestinal effects include ileus, and delayed gastric emptying, urinary retention may occur. Metabolic effects. There is increased secretion of cortisol, glucagon, growth hormone, vasopressin, aldosterone, renin, angiotensin, catecholamines, etc., and reduced secretion of insulin and testosterone. The combined effects of these endocrine changes includes hyperglycemia, lipolysis, proteolysis, hypermetabolism, and a catabolic state impairment of wound healing and immune function, sodium and water retention, increased fibrinogen and platelet activation, etc. There is decreased immunity, NK cell activity is reduced, there is reduced cytotoxic T lymphocyte count, there is reduction in phagocytosis by neutrophils, there is increased infection and impaired wound healing. Psychological effects of pain includes patient suffering and distress, depression, anxiety, fear, fatigue, sleep-related problems, recollection of painful experiences during ICU treatment, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Uncontrolled pain contributes to the development of chronic pain. There is increased post-operative morbidity and increased length of hospital stay. Many patients treated in ICUs are unable to self-report pain due to various factors and tools to identify pain in these patients are required for effective pain management. Treatment of pain is associated with many benefits, such as fewer days on mechanical ventilation, reduction in infection, increased patient satisfaction, and avoidance of the above-mentioned consequences of pain. Routine monitoring of pain in ICU patients is recommended by the Society of Intensive Care Medicine. According to the PADIS SCCM Guidelines 2018, Upon analysis of 12 behavioral pain assessment tools, the following have the greatest validity and reliability for assessing pain in critically ill adults unable to self-report pain. Critical Care Pain Observation Tool CPOT, Behavioral Pain Scale in Intubated Patients BPS, and Behavioral Pain Scale in Non-Intubated Patients BPS and I. It is essential to have communication between doctors and nurses in the ICU about pain and sedation in order to write a local protocol describing which clinical instruments should be used for assessment, agree upon the targets to reach optimal analgesia and sedation, decide the choice of drugs available in the ICU, and develop an algorithm to adjust doses according to the results of this evaluation. Indication of BPS BPS is used to quantify pain in intubated and extubated patients using body language and patient ventilator interactions for intubated patients. BPS was created by Jean-Francois Payen. Pain can alter vital signs in the ICU setting 
and BPS can help confirm or refute this hypothesis. For BPS scoring to be done well by different raters, description of the items should be easily accessible, for example, placed on a panel in each ICU room. Frequency of BPS scoring The BPS should be used at rest and during a noxious stimulus such as endotracheal suctioning, turning and mobilization. It's adequate to assess pain once per shift, plus every time analgesia is changed. BPS scoring and subsequent management The formula for BPS is addition of assigned points as mentioned below. First, determine if the patient is intubated or not. For intubated patients, there are three items for scoring, facial expression, upper limb movements, and compliance with mechanical ventilation. For facial expression, a score of 1 is assigned for the relaxed patient, a score of 2 is assigned for patients with partially tightened face, for example, brow lowering, a score of 3 is assigned to a patient with a fully tightened face, for example, eyelid closing, and a score of 4 is assigned to a patient who is grimacing. Next is upper limb movement. A score of 1 is assigned when the patient has no movement. A score of 2 is assigned when the patient has partially bent upper limbs. A score of 3 is assigned when the patient's upper limbs are fully bent with finger flexion. And a score of 4 is assigned if the patient has permanently retracted upper limbs. The last item is compliance with mechanical ventilation. A score of 1 is assigned if the patient is tolerating ventilation. A score of 2 is assigned if the patient is coughing but tolerating ventilation for most of the time. A score of 3 is assigned if the patient is fighting the ventilator. And a score of 4 is assigned if the physician is unable to control ventilation. For non-intubated patients, the scoring for facial expression and upper limb movements are the same as in intubated patients but compliance with mechanical ventilation is replaced with the item vocalization. A score of 1 is assigned if there is no pain vocalization. A score of 2 is assigned if there is moaning, not frequent, 3 or less per minute, and not prolonged, 3 seconds or less. A score of 3 is assigned if moaning is frequent, more than 3 times per minute, or prolonged, more than 3 seconds. A score of 4 is assigned if there is howling or verbal complaint, which includes ow or ouch or breath holding. BPS scores ranges from 3 to 12. If the total score is 3, this indicates no pain. If the total score is 4 to 5, this indicates mild pain. If the total score is 6 to 11, this indicates an unacceptable amount of pain. For scores 6 or more, consider sedation and or analgesia. If the total score is 12, this indicates maximum pain. The target for pain control is a BPS score of 5 or less. Evidence base for BPS In the original study by Payan et al. in 2001, the study sample was 31 ICU patients in a trauma and surgical intensive care unit. BPS was developed and validated by observing response patterns when performing non-painful procedures such as a central line dressing change and noxious procedures such as endotracheal tube suctioning. Tests, retest, reliability tested during rest and procedure. R was 0.71 at rest and 0.50 during the procedure. Both have a p-value of less than 0.1. Internal consistency, Kronbach Alpha was 0.94. BPS and CPOT have subsequently been validated across large samples of medical, surgical and trauma ICUs. Various observational studies have demonstrated that BPS had good psychometric indices and inter-observer agreement of assessments in medical, surgical and trauma patients without cerebral stroke. Studies involving brain-injured patients using BPS and CPOT are small. For example, a study by Bernard et al. in 2019 compared the nociception coma scale adapted for intubated patients, NCSI, its revised version, NCSRI, and the behavioral pain scale, BPS, and video pupillometry for measuring pain in 50 intubated, non-communicating, critically ill, brain-injured patients. All tools increased significantly more during the nociceptive procedures versus the non-nociceptive procedure. 
BPS was the only pain tool that did not increase significantly during the non-nociceptive procedure, suggesting that BPS was the most discriminant tool. BPS interrater reliability had a kappa of 0.86. The author concluded that BPS, NCSI, and NCSRI were valid, reliable, and acceptable pain scales for use in intubated critically ill, brain-injured patients unlike video pupillometry. The cutoff value suggested for BPS is more than 5. Sensitivity and specificity of BPS compared to patients' self-reported pain was investigated by Servernini et al. in 2016. The noxious stimuli chosen were nursing maneuvers which consisted of passive turning, cleaning, repositioning, airway suctioning, medication administration, and catheter management. One minute before nursing maneuvers, BPS sensitivity was 79.2%, specificity was 61.2%. During nursing maneuvers, BPS sensitivity was 62.8% and specificity was 91.7%. 20 minutes after nursing maneuvers, BPS sensitivity was 62.5% and specificity was 60.8%. Overall, BPS sensitivity was 84.8% and specificity was 52.3%. BPS was found to be more specific than CPOT, but less sensitive. CPOT and BPS scores were significantly correlated with VAS. CPOT and BPS showed a good criterion and discriminant validity. The combination of BPS and CPOT resulted in better sensitivity of 80.4%. Rahu et al. in 2015 investigated correlations Spearman row of BPS with the numeric rating scale in communicative patients. Prior to noxious stimulus, Spearman row was 0.2050. During noxious stimulus, Spearman row was 0.5557 with a p value of less than 0.001. These are my references. Thank you.